Howdy y'all. Sorry I haven't posted in a while. I've been uh, really sick. Uh, my immune system had bottomed out from this new meds my doctor had me on and I got a whole bunch of infections. I ended up getting a sinus infection, a throat infection, a urinary tract infection, and a kidney infection all at the same time. And uh, it had me down and out for a while. But uh, it's all over with, 99% of it now, little sniffles here and there. And uh, so I'm doing pretty good now. Uh, so I'm back at recording. And uh, I got the drill bits I needed to finish up uh, pinning the studs. And I can get this engine together and I got some spray foam. And I went ahead and spray foamed the trunk all up. And I'm letting it dry now. And uh, I'm gonna show you. That's just some light shining on it. But uh, yeah, I got all my little cracks and crevices all spray foamed up. And now I just gotta let it all dry and then I can trim it down. After I trim it down, I'll hit it with a little bit of paint back here. Nothing special, just to cover stuff up, keep it protected. Then I can run my whole fuel system, my electrical system, everything now. I have everything I need to finish the engine and uh transmission you know is already done so i'm getting on it now and i'll show you as soon as i finish pinning these studs all right i got some good news and some bad news i'll start off with the good news i got the fuel tank mounted or mocked up mounted down it's not its final thing i got to get the actual bolts to stick in here right now i just uh, self-tapped it down temporarily but she's in here good and tight and uh, hooked up the main feed line, fuel line, and uh, it reaches right there. So that's where my pump is gonna go and my filter and my pump. And uh, then I gotta get another piece to go from there uh, to the engine bay, which isn't very far. Probably another six foot and more than enough. And then I need to run this return line. So I need a return line, I need a 16 foot for return line and another six foot for uh, the main feed line. And I uh, got the vent hooked up there and there and I uh, suck through it, goes through good and easy, no problem. So it won't be venting inside the fuel area, you know, it's got a vent up through here. What I'll probably do is I don't know if I will or not. I might just leave it that way, but I might get one of them little filters that goes into the rubber and you just stick it on there, you know. I don't know, we'll see. But uh, that part is done. That's the good news. Got all that mocked up how it's gonna be done. The bad news is I think I gotta take these heads off and use my 68 truck heads. Uh, because I was putting all these on, I'll flip it around, putting all these on and uh, slowly tightening them down, you know, you turn the engine over, give it a little tight till you can't turn it, turn the engine over, give them a little tight till you can't turn them, you know, it's so doing that to all of them and several of them popped up and the head actually broke in one spot, right? there where I had it pinned actually broke that whole piece off so pinning didn't work as I expected I probably could have done a better job pinning probably you know if I had the heads off and the, and the lifter and the, the uh, springs off and everything then I probably got to get a I could have gotten a straighter line and done a better job but it just, it's not working. So what I'm gonna do is take my 68 truck heads for the 302, which I have sitting right there. I'll get those cleaned up and uh, switch out the springs, put my springs on these heads and my valve seals on these heads and uh, see what I can do that way. Um, 
I, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. I, that's the only two set of head, 302 heads I have. Um, those are old solenoids for old Fords, and that's a Ford 4.0 intake, plenum. But these are my 302 heads. Or 69 truck heads, I think these were, not 68. Yeah, they were 69 according to the casting number. Um, there was nothing wrong with these heads. These are the original heads that was on that engine. They're just not ported like I just did with that one. And they're not built, you know. So what I'll do is I'll clean these up super good. Probably maybe sandblast them. And uh, put my springs on them. And once I get my springs on them, then I'll get them put onto this block and or get it painted obviously the heads painted and then put on this block and go from there because these heads unfortunately are just not gonna work as much as that pains me to say that and it does pain me because the last thing I want to do is take the intake back off to pull the heads off because I got the intake good and sealed and kind of ticks me off but I don't have much choice because these heads just will not work unfortunate but they will not so no matter what I do I can't keep the studs in them when I turn it over and I screwed up from the very beginning when I first put them in there and uh, I used the wrong size drill bit for the tapping so it's all on me, but we'll get her straightened out. That was the bad news. All right, so that's gonna take me a little bit of time. I'll probably do behind the scenes. Um, got the field system ran for the most part. I still need some more line. I need some more braided line. Actually, I don't think I need braided line for the return line, but it'd probably be a good idea anyways. So I'll probably get another uh, braided line for the fuel line. I just got to see if I can get that much. Let's tow all together. I'm going to need 10 plus 6 is 6. It's 12. It's 22 feet. So I got to find c close to 22 feet or more of this 3-8 steel braided line to finish the fuel lines running. And uh, I did go ahead and mark out uh, Oh, trunk up here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but I got it marked as to which pin. This is the only pin that has a wire going to it right here. See, it's, the mark is right there. That's the only pin that has a wire going to it that goes to the float system for the fuel gauge. So, and I still need to get a neck for this. I mean, I don't really need to, but I'd like to. That way I can actually put a cap on it. Just, I just need a short neck with a cap that I can shove on here. So I'll probably go out to my junkyard, find one out there that'll work for this, cut it down so it's not long, you know, it just needs to be a short neck. So I can pop this trunk and put a fuel can in there, you know, and fire it up or a fuel hose in there and fire it up. But it's coming along, guys. We're getting there. Yeah, sorry I haven't been filming. i just been so sick. I barely even get out of bed, let alone do anything, so. Um, that's where we're at. Uh, right here is the transmission. It's good to go. Right there's my mounts. I haven't cleaned those up or painted those yet. And uh, torque converters right here. I ended up just hitting it with some green because it looked horrible when I first started trying to get that... Uh, um, that uh, same color black as I put on the tail of this transmission and I ran out this looked horrible so I just went ahead and hit it now I probably got paint build up here which is gonna make it a little harder to go into the engine into the you know the crank and but I'll get it I'll get it in there it'll be fine everything's always fine just takes a little time I guess I'm a poet <laughs> But anyways, I'll probably hook up my fuel system and the pump and the uh, filter and stuff down there. 
and get it mounted and ready and find a way to mount my electrical uh, box onto that bar. Let's see, where was it? Right here it is. Yeah, I gotta figure out how I can mount this. I got four holes here in the back of this thing, two on each side. So I gotta get that mounted. I'm gonna mount it right on the main roll cage bar. It goes in front right there. So that'll go there. Yes, things are taking a lot longer than I planned, but better to take your time with something like this and do it right, especially when your light, you know, is in your hands doing 120, 130 miles an hour and a quarter mile. Uh, something happens. Yeah, not pretty. So better to be safe than sorry. So I'd rather take my time and do it right. All right, guys, you have a good one. I'll let you go for now. And uh, that's where, where we are sitting. All right, one more thing to show you guys uh, that I just finished up. I wanted to do real quick before I headed in for the night and uh, show you the fuel system. Right. I got it mounted there and onto the k and there. Fuel filter plus the stock when it came with it. And uh, I'm gonna run it right up along here. All the way to the back and right there. So the fuel line is ran now, at least the main fuel line that feeds the engine. I just need to get the other piece, about six foot, to run into the actual engine bay where the engine's gonna be sitting. And then get the return line. So now I know how long I need. Altogether, I needed a total of like 32 feet. Give or take there a little bit. All right, that's what I want to show you guys. I'm going to get this video uploaded, so you got something from me. Have a good one, y'all.